Timo News presents water shortages. No water in Cape Town. One of the biggest cities in South Africa may soon be the first major city in the world to run out of water. Cape Town is facing a water crisis and has less than 100 days before day zero on April 21st, when the water supply is expected to run out. Years of extreme drought have caused storage levels in dams to drop below 30 percent. Once it falls to 13.5 percent, taps in the city will be shut off. Local authorities restricted water usage to 87 liters per person per day, but after only 39 percent of residents complied, the limit has now been lowered to 50 liters. Its 4 million residents are being told to take two-minute showers and have been banned from filling pools, watering gardens or washing cars. Households that go over their water allowance will also be asked to pay higher tariffs. After day zero, citizens will need to line up at one of 200 water collection points throughout the city, where each can collect a maximum of 25 liters a day. Authorities have also been looking into alternative ways to source water, like wastewater recycling, drilling into aquifers, or seawater desalination. Argentina's shame. Blistering summer heat, horrid poverty and begging in the street all led a girl, probably no older than three, to drink water from a puddle in Posadas, Argentina, earlier this month. This image of those horrible circumstances went viral and brought international shame, outrage and criticism towards Argentina. It was photographed by a local journalist who had stopped at a nearby traffic light and was then shared with others in Posadas, including UNICEF aid worker Miguel Rios, who eventually posted it to Facebook. In a text accompanying the image, he wrote, While the country is on fire, this little Guarani girl is drinking from the ground. We are doing something wrong as a society, right? Reportedly, the girl is from the Villa Guarani community. They're one of Argentina's many indigenous peoples. According to reports, journalists in the area banded together and got some water for the kids. Rios also said that the girl in the photo was seen by medical staff afterwards. Argentina, a southern hemisphere country, itself is currently in the height of its summer. It's also currently embroiled in mass protests over controversial social reforms. Both the World Bank and CIA data list Argentina as one of the most unequal countries on the planet. Reportedly, Mbia kids are sent by families into Posadas to beg for money. Reportedly, they do receive some government assistance and are often taken back home, but usually return shortly after. Apparently, that's because the families earn more from begging than they can in their villages. The United Arab Emirates wants to build a mountain to solve a drought because why not? If there's one country that likes to think big, it's the United Arab Emirates. When faced with a water shortage, the country is ditching the boring option to conserve and instead has opted to build a huge mountain for more rainfall. Compared to the international average of 170 to 300 liters, an average United Arab Emirates resident uses 550 liters of water daily. This is especially problematic as water in the region is in very short supply due to the arid climate and naturally low rates of precipitation. The government has already turned to artificial methods. $558,000 were spent on cloud seeding in 2015. Now 400,000 is going towards funding a development plan for man-made mountains. Mountains force air to rise up into the atmosphere. There, air cools and become clouds that can then be seeded for rain. The cloud seeding can have undesirable outcomes such as too much rainfall or none at all. Due to the rain shadow effect, an artificial mountain can inhibit rainfall on one side, causing that area to become more parched. Experts from the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research in the U.S. are in the early stages of the project. A modeling study is being carried out to determine the location, height, and width of the mountain. Study shows severe drought may be behind Mideast crisis. Much of the Middle East is in turmoil as the relentless civil war in Syria rages on and millions of Syrians continue to flee their country. Many others from North Africa and the Middle East are also seeking refuge from the conflict and instability in their own homelands. A recent study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research has attributed the conflict, at least in part, to a series of droughts caused by man-made climate change. The current mega-drought in the Levant region, which includes Cyprus, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey, began in 1998. To map out droughts over time, researchers examined tree rings from both live and dead trees. The scientists studied tree samples from countries bordering the Mediterranean. Tree rings are like an ecological footprint. Thin rings mean a tree lived through a period of drought. The thinner the ring, the longer the drought. 
From the data gathered, scientists were able to form an idea of drought patterns in the region in recent years compared to historical records. In their study, they discovered that the current drought in the Levant is 10 to 20 percent drier than the worst drought of the past 900 years. The drought has contributed to food insecurities and poverty in the region and led to a mass exodus of refugees out of the Middle East and into Europe. The cause of the drought is likely anthropogenic, as scientists discovered anomalies in the current tree ring data well outside the bounds of natural variation. Human conflict and environmental problems are often intertwined. Studies have shown that before the start of the Syrian uprising in 2011, the country had experienced one of the most severe droughts in recorded history. Brazil's largest city faces dry taps. When you think of Brazil, images like these may come to mind. But thanks to record dry conditions not seen in 84 years, this is the reality for many of its citizens. Thanks to changing weather patterns and deforestation of watershed areas, many parts of Brazil are experiencing severe drought conditions. Hardest hit is the southeast coast, home to Sao Paulo, the country's most populated city with 20 million residents. Explosive population growth coupled with river pollution, leaky pipes, and deforestation have caused already lean water supplies to become even more scarce. Electrical services are also in danger as well since hydroelectric power makes up a sizable amount of their power generation. Once reservoirs drop below 18% capacity, they will cease to generate power. Because of this, Sao Paulo residents could see running water offered only twice a week on a rolling basis, along with rolling brownouts and blackouts. Some 17% of Brazilian towns and states have declared states of emergency in the face of the drought, forcing many of them to cancel their plans for carnival festivals. Cape Town needs a whole lot of water. You shouldn't waste water. No, seriously. Cape Town is running out of water and implemented new water restrictions Thursday, reducing the previous 87 liter limit to 50 liters per day. Officials are predicting if reservoir levels continue to fall as expected, Cape Town will run dry by April 16th, which is being called day zero. With 50 liters, a person could theoretically use 18 liters for dishes and laundry, 15 liters for a 90 second shower, 9 liters for one toilet flush, 3 liters for hygiene, 2 liters for cooking, 2 liters for drinking water, and 1 liter for pets. The city is now working to improve its water infrastructure by rushing to construct desalination, aquifer, and water recycling projects. If the government declares day zero, water will be shut off for the city until it rains again. Residents will only be allowed 25 liters to be collected from one of 200 stations throughout the city. Good thing people totally listen when told to conserve resources. Cape Town will be fine. Whoa, dude, parts of California sinking by up to two inches per month. Parts of a Californian valley are sinking at an alarming rate of almost two inches a month, a new study from NASA has revealed. The faster subsidence rate in California's San Joaquin Valley has been attributed to increased consumption of groundwater due to the current drought. Pumping groundwater from the deep aquifer reduces water pressure and causes the clay particles in the corker and clay, a layer that separates the valley's shallow aquifer from its deep aquifer, to compact, leading the heavy ground above to collapse. Once the clay particles compact, it can never be repaired, permanently limiting future water storage capability. Subsidence was observed almost everywhere in the San Joaquin Valley, with some of the worst sinking near the town of Corcoran and El Nido which dropped 13 inches and 10 inches respectively over a six-month period through early this year. The subsidence is damaging roads, pipes and altering the slopes of the land, but the situation is unlikely to improve anytime soon. Cities that could run out of drinking water. Stop wasting water. No, seriously. As global fresh water supplies become scarce, several major cities across the world could run out of drinking water like Cape Town. Sao Paulo experienced a drinking water crisis in 2015 when its main reservoir fell below 4% capacity and also had reservoir issues in January of 2017. Bangalore's growing property market and tech industry have outpaced the city's ability to manage water and sewage systems. The city's water pipes also lose half its drinking water to waste. Beijing will increasingly struggle to meet its water needs in the future. Figures from 2015 showed 40% of the city's surface water was so polluted, it was not even suitable for agriculture or industrial use. 
Other cities at high risk are Cairo, Jakarta, Moscow, Istanbul, Mexico City, London, Tokyo, and Miami. Anyone else thirsty? Mexican chemical engineer Sergio Rico has invented a water absorbent powder designed for use in times of extended droughts. When potassium polyacrylate comes into contact with water, it transforms from a white powder into a clear, jelly like substance. Once potassium polyacrylate absorbs the water, it can be stored within the gel for up to a year without evaporating. The water within the potassium polyacrylate will only be absorbed by the soil when a plant's roots consume it. This water absorbent polymer, or solid rain, is made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and potassium. Farmers in Mexico have found their crop yield increase by 300% with the help of solid rain. A vast underground water reservoir has been found in Kenya's Turkana region. The giant aquifer was found in a Lodakipi basin. It is roughly the same size as Rhode Island. Located at 300 meters underground, it could provide water for Kenya for 70 years. Currently, close to half of Kenya's 41 million people have no access to clean water. The newly found water should be available for the residents in the Turkana region within a month.